RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Bruce, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Phil is currently being seen all over the country in a thrilling new action picture about our long-range bombers, Wild Blue Yonder. Phil is naturally proud of the picture, but his methods of getting people to go see it are considered odd even in Hollywood. More about that later, but first a word from RCA Victor. This is the year you can't afford to miss television. What with national elections coming up and coast-to-coast -coast coverage of big events. And now's the time to buy an RCA Victor Superset at the lowest prices ever. Go straight to your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow and see the Colby, for example. It's a 17-inch table model combining the highest standards of performance with the lowest possible price. You can buy the Colby now for only $229.95. Or you can buy the beautiful Selfridge Ensemble, 21-inch television with matching consulate base, for only $379.50. It's console television at a table model price. You're sure of enjoying the finest in television with either of these great new super sets, the Selfridge Ensemble or the Colby, made by RCA Victor, cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Phil's latest movie, Wild Blue Yonder, is currently being shown in Los Angeles. Phil is very proud of the part he played in it and has taken his family downtown to see it. As we look in, they are just leaving the theater. Ah, if I say so myself, it's a grand picture. Alice, wasn't my performance superb? Excellent, dear. How'd you kids like my performance? Stupendous, Daddy. Colossal, Father. <laughs> Phil, can we go home now? So soon? We've only seen the picture 12 times today. <laughs> oh, I can't stand to see it again. I'm going home. Come on, Phil. Don't nobody move. I got you covered. <laughs> Daddy, we've been practically living at this theater And I'm hungry Well, I'll get you some more popcorn oh, Not again We've had popcorn for breakfast, lunch, and dinner But it wasn't always the same For breakfast, we had fried popcorn <laughs> For lunch, we had sautéed popcorn And tonight, I have a surprise for you We're having popcorn a la mode <laughs> What's that? Cold popcorn on top of hot Popcorn <laughs> Now, come on, let's go back into the theater Hey, wait a minute, where's Willie? Well, I don't think he came out of the theater Oh, oh, here he comes now Oh, dear I'm so weak <laughs> Sitting in that theater for such a long time I thought Oh, no Look out, everybody They just dropped an atom bomb An atom bomb? What are you talking about? What's that blinding flash on the horizon? That's the sun <laughs> The sun Oh, the sun. I never thought I'd live to see it again. <laughs> Let me bask in its warmth. Let me revel in its life-giving rays. Let me Oh, shut up! <laughs> Been in the dark a lousy 24 hours, and he makes a big thing out of it. Now, come on, let's go back in the theater Daddy, and... Daddy, look, here comes Uncle Frankie. Yeah, there is old Frankie. Let's wait for him. He'll want to go with us. Hey! Hello, Frankie. Hi, Curly. Hey, you're just in time, Remley. We're all going in to see my picture. So long, Curly. Come back. <laughs> Frankie, what's the matter with you? Aren't you... Well, aren't you anxious to see my picture? Well, of course I am. I'm going to see it on television. It won't be on television for 15 years. <laughs> I can wait. <laughs> Remley, you're going to see that picture with me right now. Curly, we can't go in now. Have you forgotten? We have a band rehearsal in half an hour. Holy smokes. 
Oh, okay. I had forgotten all about it. Hey, Remley, hmm? we'll go to the band rehearsal now, but you got to promise me that you'll go see the picture some other time. Well, of course. I'm dying to see it. Good boy. Hey, we'll go see it together tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Oh, I'd love to, Curly, but I've made other arrangements. What other arrangements? Well, you picked the one night that I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> Stop with that all. Now, look, let's get down to rehearsal. Come on, Alice. Hey, Willie, you take the kids back into the theater and I'll pick them up here uh, Tuesday. I wish I were dead. <laughs> Say, Phil, we're a little late. We'd better hurry into the studio. The boys in the band are probably waiting. Let them wait, let them wait. Hey, as I was saying, Frankie, hey, this picture. Oh, man, this is the best I ever was. I'm really great in there. Hey, I'll tell you what the story's all about. Nobody asked you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. Now, listen, it's the story of the B-29s in the last war, and I play the part of a, of a flying sergeant. I'm a tail gunner. And I sit there in the rear bubble of the B-29 and fight off them Japanese planes. How's that sound? Nice and dull. <laughs> All right for you. But you'll find out what you're missing in a few minutes. The boys in the band saw it last night, and I guarantee it's stamped on their minds indelibly. Well, well, we'll find out soon enough. Here's the studio. Come on, let's go in. Hi, fellas. All right, fellas, calm down. All right, hold it a minute. Quiet, your leader's here. Well, if it ain't Sergeant Harris, boy, belly blister. <laughs> <laughs> well, fellas, did you all go to see my picture last night like I told you to? Yes, maestro, we went. First, we all met in Joe's Bar and Grill and drank our dinner. <laughs> <laughs> drank your dinner, huh? And then you went to see my picture? Yeah, we saw the wild red yonder. <laughs> it's the wild blue, young. Not through our bloodshot little eyeball. <laughs> I don't think you guys even saw my picture. We did, too. Then prove it. Just prove it to me. Tell me the whole story. Okay, fellas, he asked for it. Let him have it. Republic Pictures presents Phil Harris in Wild Blue Yonder. Washington, the President of the United Never States... Never mind the newsreel! <laughs> next thing I know, you'll be giving me the coming attraction. And don't forget, next week at this theater, the world premiere of Alexander's Ragtime Band starring Alice Faye. Don't miss it. Will you break it up? Move. Break it up! <laughs> Get your hot popcorn here! There'll be immediate seating in the mezzanine. Will you cut it out? <laughs> Say that once more. Mezzanine. <laughs> One more. Mezzanine. <laughs> he was in the Navy with me. <laughs> Will you please cut that out? Just forget about my picture. Now let's get on with the rehearsal. Give me a downbeat. <laughs> Well, here's an invitation to a celebration Tomorrow night at Lyceum Hall Go get your glad rags pressed And wear your two-tone vest To the 8th Street Association Barbecue And fancy dress ball Boogie-woogie thumping Starts the joint a-jumping All them cats is climbing the wall 
the party really goes Cause things is really froze At the 8th Street Association Barbecue And fancy dress ball Why there the hoity-toity Meets the hoi polite This affair's really bomb time The function goes from 10 Until they say amen How they carry on Grab your sweetest honey And if you lack the money The building loan will welcome you call It only costs an ace To grab yourself some space At the 8th Street Association Barbecue And fancy dress ball Now when it's 12 o'clock They have the grand parade And when it's 1 o'clock The famous masquerade And when it's 2 a.m. The best of board is spread With the punch bowl The spare ribs And the homemade bread It's pushing 4 a.m. The best of board is clean They start to count the votes To find the beauty queen And when it's chime and five The folks resume their jive They call the man They want the man They want the leader Of that band Grab your sweetest honey, and if you lack the money, old building loan will welcome you call. It only costs the nace to grab yourself some space at the 8th Street Association Barbecue. And fancy dress ball amalgamated, that fancy dress ball consolidated. Oh, fancy dress ball incorporated, the 8th Street Association Barbecue. And fancy dress B A double L ball. Hey, hey, Curly. Yeah. Why do you insist that everybody go see a picture? Well, because it's a good movie, and besides, I get a percentage of all the money that's taken in. And that is why I have a salesman working for me. <laughs> A salesman? That's right. I hired a guy that talks people into going to see my picture three or four times. Oh, Phil. <laughs> Nobody can talk people into going to see your picture. Tut, tut. My boy can. <laughs> <laughs> he has a rather forceful personality. He can talk people into anything. Supposing they refuse him. They wouldn't dare, Blondie. <laughs> Broken. Alice, I want you to meet the sales force. <laughs> How's business, Grogue? You getting many people to go see my picture? Harris, this has not been an easy job. <laughs> However, I did better this morning. You see, I rented a bus to drive the people to the theater, and uh, I managed to persuade a few. Persuade them? Mm-hmm. Mr. Grogan... You don't use any high-pressure methods, do you? Please. I do not believe in forcing people. For example, just this morning, I approached 30 people. I left it entirely up to them. I merely said, I said, which would you rather do today? Go see Phil Harris's picture or get a 45 slug between the eyes? <laughs> Naturally, their choice was unanimous. Naturally, naturally, yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to do with the 30 stiffs I got in the box? <laughs> Business is kind of dead, huh, Grogan? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I keep plugging away. <laughs> Say, Harris, where do you want me to dump this load? In the orchestra or the balcony? Look, Grogan, what good is a dead audience to me? When I come on the screen, they can't applaud me. They can't hiss you either. <laughs> you better settle for that, Curly. Oh, Mr. Grogan, stop it. I know you didn't kill anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just told him that to make him feel good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Grogan, you mean you couldn't get anybody into the bus? Just one little kid. <laughs> I had to hijack him on the way to school. <laughs> well, one abducted child is better than nothing. Where is this little lad? Got him tied up outside. I'll bring him in. <laughs> 
All right, kid, come on in here now. Come on, come Stop on. Stop shoving, you big ape! I said get in there. Get your greasy mitts off of me, little pink body! <laughs> oh, you heisted a good one, Grogan. <laughs> well, it's the best I could do, boss. Boss? So you're the head of this kidnapping ring, Mr. Harris? Now, just a minute, please kid. Please I... don't kill me. I'm too young to die. I beg of you, please don't kill me. Stop knocking yourself out. Nobody's gonna kill you. All I want you to do is to go see my new picture. Please kill me. <laughs> I'm old enough to die. Go ahead, kill me, kill me. Will you calm down? I just want you to see Wild Blue Yonder. I seen it. Last Saturday, me and me Boy Scout troop went to the matinee. Exciting picture, wasn't it? Yeah, very exciting. We was all sitting there on the edge of our seats watching Wendell Corey and Forrest Tucker fighting off the enemy planes. They was doing great and everything was going along fine when all of a sudden something terrible happened. What? Your kisser came on the screen. <laughs> What's the matter with my kisser? It ain't the kind of a face you can spring on little kids all of a sudden. <laughs> Listen, I'll have you know, son, that I'm pretty good in this picture. And I had some great scenes, especially that one scene where I was sitting in the tail of a B-29 and the Jap Zeros were diving at me from all directions, trying to kill me, trying to shoot me down. How'd you like that scene? I thought it was un-American. <laughs> What was un-American about it? You had the audience rooting for the Japs. Why are the pictures doing so good in Tokyo? Maybe I ought to change my name to Saki Hugh Harris. Or Saki Hugh Harris. Look, Julius, I'm going to give you one more chance. Do you want to see my picture or don't you? I don't you. <laughs> well, you see what I'm up against, Harris? As soon as the people know you're in a picture, they don't want to see it. That's not so. It's just the opposite. If more people knew I was in the picture, they'd flock to see it. There's only some way I could just let them know that I'm in it. Say, Phil, I have an idea. Why don't you do a sketch of Wild Blue Yonder on our radio show? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> hey, sure. If everybody who listens to my radio show goes to the picture... The theaters would be crowded. Eight people make a crowd? <laughs> you get out of this. Look, Remley. Yes. Remley, yes. look, you go over to my writers and tell them to go see my picture and then write a sketch about it and tell them that I want it ready for rehearsal tonight. Okay, Curly, I'm on my way. Get going. <laughs> What's taking Remley so long? It's 8 o'clock and everybody's here for the rehearsal. Maybe you'd better call him and find here out. Here I am, Curly. Sorry I'm late. Well, here's your sketch. Ah, oh, man, you're okay. <laughs> hey, the writers do a good job? Uh, they didn't write it, Curly. Who did? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You didn't. Yes, I did. I wrote the sketch and I gave it the Remley touch. Oh, the kiss of death. <laughs> oh, please. I went to see the picture before I wrote it. Oh, you and did? Curly, it was great. Hey, you really liked it? Yes, and you were wonderful. When you came home with your sample cases and your wife asked you what happened in Boston, Willie, I just sat there and cried. Yeah, I was rather good in that particular... Wait a minute. <laughs> Remley, you didn't see Wild Blue Yonder. You saw Death of a Salesman. Why did you go see that? My cousin's an usher there. I got in for nothing. <laughs> Besides, what difference does it make? A picture is a picture. Remley, we can't do Death of a Salesman. I want to plug my movie. Well, it's too late, Curly. Oh. The sketch is written. You're just going to have to do it. Besides, Death of a Salesman might win the Academy Award. It'll make you look more important. It'll give you a chance to prove that you're as good an actor as Frederick March. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Frankie happens to be right this time yeah. And we'll do his sketch Remley who's, Who plays what in this thing? You play the part of the salesman, Willie Loman You're a failure Me and Julius play your two sons Oh, I really am a failure <laughs> And Alice 
Ross plays your wife, Linda. All right, now let's get started. Music, please. Death of a Salesman. This is the psychological study of Willie Loman, a traveling salesman, a man who all his life strove for success but never achieved it. As we look in, Willie has just returned home from a selling trip through New England. He is trudging wearily up the walk to his house, carrying his sample cases. Ah, what a trip. I've been on the road for two weeks and I ain't sold a thing. Can't understand why nobody wants to buy my new spring line of soft bagels. <laughs> oh, well, feels nice to be back home. It'll be good to see my wife again. And my two boys. Ah, I can see their little faces now. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least... It'll be good to see my beloved wife again. Oh, hello, Willie. Hello, Sam. Sam, <laughs> I'm your wife, Linda. Oh, I'm sorry. You look just like an old bat boy I knew in Bridgeport. <laughs> oh, Willie, what's wrong? Your mind has been wandering lately. What's the matter? Nothing's the matter, I tell you. Nothing. I'm all right. And stop nagging. Oh, but something must be wrong. You never acted like this. A metamorphosis has taken place. That's a lie. I never met a morphosis in my life. <laughs> Willie, I can't stand you the way you are. What's wrong with the way I are? I are the same as I are when you married me 30 years ago. I couldn't stand you then either. <laughs> Willie, let's face it. You're nothing but a failure. My life has been nothing but a struggle with you. For 30 years, I've worked my fingers to the bone, and what have I got to show for it? Bony fingers. <laughs> but on you, they look good. <laughs> Willie, I heard an ugly rumor about you, and I want to know the truth. <laughs> the truth about what? What happened in Boston, Willie? Are you kidding? Nothing ever happens in Boston. <laughs> Everything's banned. And I mean everything. <laughs> now, enough of this. Where are my two boys? Those boys, the pride of my life. The only thing I'm living for. Where are my sons? You mean Biff and Hap? Yes, I... Biff and Hap? <laughs> Where'd they get them names? Off of a can of dog food? <laughs> you named them, dear. I did. What was I on at the time? Willie, <laughs> look, here comes our boy, Biff. Biff, Biff, your father is home. Yes, come on in, son. Just let me look at you. My boy, Biff. Duh! <laughs> <laughs> ah, to think he's only 42 years old. <laughs> Come over and say something to your old dad, son. No, uh, what happened in Boston, Willie? <laughs> it should happen to you. <laughs> What's the matter with him, Ma? He's just stupid. <laughs> and it's all your fault. You're never home to advise him. Don't you think it's time you had a man-to-man -man talk with him and told him about life? I guess you're right, Linda. Son? I'm going to give you a little advice. And you'll never have any trouble if you remember one thing. Life is like a Chinese rock garden. Uh, what does that mean? How should I know? <laughs> what do you think I am, a philosopher or something? Well, they tell him about the facts of life. Oh, them. <laughs> Son? Son? Uh, here I am, over here. Oh, the kid's improving. He knows where he is now. <laughs> Son, it's time you learned the bare facts of life. Because life has a lot of bare facts, and you're old enough to know the facts are there, and them that are there are there, and they're bare. So <laughs> there. <laughs> I 
I'll never forget that advice, Father. It will guide me along the road to the idiocy. <laughs> now that I've straightened you out, I'd like to talk to my brother, Hap. Call Hap down, Linda. Hap? Hap, come on down. Your father is home. Is he sober? Yes. <laughs> How do you know it's him? <laughs> never mind that. Just come on in here. Ah, there's my boy, Hap. How old is he now, Linda? Twenty-two. And isn't he a fine figure of a man? Ah, he certainly is. Two hundred and forty-eight pounds and four foot tall. <laughs> ah, you're growing sideways nicely, boy. <laughs> I said you're growing sideways... Oh, it's my line, I see. <laughs> Hap <laughs> This ought to get some kind of an award <laughs> But I can't say what over here I... <laughs> Hap, waddle over here and kiss your father How have you been, son? Never mind that What happened in Boston, Mac? Nothing happened in Boston If they ever ask me about what happened in Steubenville I'm dead <laughs> I want to talk to you. First, I want to talk to you. Why did you give me that name, Hap? That's not your full name. It's short for haphazard. <laughs> now, look, Hap, you haven't been working. You haven't been doing nothing. You've been rude to your mother. You just lope around the house all day, and I won't stand for any more of it. Do you hear me? I won't stand for any more of it. What are you trying to say? I don't like the way you're acting. You ain't no Lawrence Olivier yourself. <laughs> look, son, I want you to make something of yourself. I want you to... I'd like for you to be a star football player, but you're just wasting your life away. All you think about is wine, women, and song. What's wrong with wine, women, and song? Too much singing will ruin your win. <laughs> <laughs> what right have you got to complain about us? You're nothing but a failure. So that's it. My own boys turning against me. I've worked hard all my life just for you. And now that I'm an old man, I have nothing left. <coughs> nothing. Nothing but a $20,000 life insurance policy. We don't care where, how much. <laughs> 20000 Don't aggravate yourself, Pop. What you need is some fresh air. Why don't you go take a ride in the car? The, the one that hasn't got any brakes. <laughs> yes, that's the way out. There's only one thing for me to do, and I'm going to do it. Goodbye. Do you think he'll really do it? Did he done it, Mom? Come on, boys. Follow me. Where are we going, Mom? Last one down to the insurance company is a rotten egg. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. The Colby and the Selfridge Ensemble are supersets. The newest in RCA Victor television. They're RCA Victor supersets. And the great news about the Colby and the Selfridge Ensemble is that you can buy them now at exciting new low prices. That's right. You can buy the Colby, which is a superb 17-inch table model, for only $229.95. Or if you prefer the Selfridge Ensemble, it's available now at your RCA Victor dealers for only $379.50. The Selfridge is big 21-inch television and it comes complete with a beautiful matching consulate base. It's console television at a table model price. And the best thing about these prices is that they're complete. They include federal excise tax, full year warranty on your picture tube, and no extra charge for your favorite finished mahogany. So don't wait. Get one of these great new supersets made by RCA Victor. <laughs> 